the next thing I want to talk about is how you manage your key pairs in Geth. So if we go back to our Geth console and we run f.accounts, you'll see that we return null. That's because we don't have any accounts attached to this local Geth instance. And we can think of this JavaScript console very similar to the way that we were working with the test RPC in the previous videos, because we're just running a JavaScript console against a local node that's running locally. In this case, it's an actual Geth node attached to the Ethereum network, but with test RPC, it was just mocking out that exact functionality, but we can query against it the same way. So let's go ahead and try to create some accounts. So the, the command to create a geth account is geth account new. But if you look in this mainnet file, we'll see that we have a folder called key store. And if we go into the key store folder, we'll see that it is empty. So if we want our key pair to go into this folder, we're going to remember need to specify the data directory when we run the account, when we run the command. So we'll do geth data dir and then slash home slash Ubuntu slash dot Ethereum slash mainnet. And because this is the data directory, it'll automatically look for a key store folder in the data directory. If you want to specify a data directory and a key store, you can pass in another flag called key store, and then that will be the direct path to the key store file, uh, the key store folder rather. But just by default, if you just pass in the data directory, it'll look for the key store folder there. And then you just need to run the account new command. Now, this is going to prompt you to type in a passphrase. I'm just going to type in a very simple passphrase here. And then it, look, it, it looks like it worked and it created an account and it says that this is the public Ethereum address associated with that account. And if we run an LS, we'll see that we actually do have a file created here that looks like a timestamp and then a dash and then the name, the public key of the account. If we open this file up in Vim, um, we'll see that it is a JSON data structure. So these are just key value pairs that has the public address and then this thing called crypto that has a bunch of ciphertext. Now, this AES 128 CTR, this stands for Advanced Encryption Standard, and this is an algorithm that is used to do what's called symmetrical encryption, which means that it can encrypt data, but uses a passphrase, where if that passphrase is known, it can reverse the encryption and restore whatever data that was initially encrypted. So in this case, the private key to this account is encrypted, but we have this passphrase. So that if we have this JSON data structure and the passphrase, we can recover the account private key at any point. And this is going to be pretty useful because this JSON data structure is essentially portable, meaning that we can move it between devices, we can move it between machines, and always be able to keep it encrypted, but then use the password to unencrypt it if we need to. Now I can go to my JavaScript console and run f.accounts and I'll see that now that a new account has been loaded into my Geth console and we can use it like we were using any account in the test RPC. I could do f.getbalance f.accounts zero and then I'll see that this gets this has zero mainnet ether associated with it which makes sense because we literally just created this account. Now, just to prove a point, I am going to do something. Um, I'm going to go to my host machine. So this is my local laptop and I'm going to copy that key pair file down to it. So I can do that using the SCP command, um, which stands for secure copy. And it lets you copy a file from a remote virtual machine down to your local machine. So I just need to pass the path to that file on the local machine. So I can do Ubuntu at, and then um, paste in the, URL of that machine and then the path to it. So it's slash home slash Ubuntu slash dot Ethereum slash mainnet slash key store and then the actual name of the file. So let's copy that guy and I missed a slash in here. And then we're going to copy that locally to slash home or slash users slash always be coding and then slash desktop, which is my desktop. And then we'll just call this keystore.json. So we should see that I do have this keystore.json file now locally on my machine. Now I'm going to go to myetherwallet.com, which is the open source JavaScript UI for interacting with Ethereum. And I'll go to view wallet info. Now, one of the ways that you can view the info of a wallet through this user interface is by uploading a keystore file. So if I select the wallet file that I just downloaded, this keystore.json, remember it's encrypted with a passphrase, so hopefully I remember what that was because I just typed it in like a couple seconds ago. Um, and then I unlock it. And you'll see that this actually does unencrypt the wallet. And now I have that Ethereum address and the private key associated with it. And I have eff effectively ported that 
from the geth node into a client side UI. Another thing that you might want to do is import an existing key pair that you already have into your geth node. So for example, this is a private key for an Ethereum address that I have, and I want to import the Ethereum address into my geth node. So one of the ways that you can do that is using the get account import command. But before you do this, you actually need to store this private key as a as a text file. So I'm just going to make a temp.txt file and then paste in the private key there. And then I'll do get dash dash data dir and then the current directory as the data directory because I'm already in it, account import and then pass the path to that temp.txt file. And now it will try to import it and it'll give me an opportunity to encrypt it with a passphrase, which I will do. And you'll see that the address was then imported. And now I should have two key pairs like running locally in my geth node. So if I did f.accounts, I would see that I have two now. And if I wanted to just get an access to the list at any time, I could do geth dash dash data dir dot and then account list. And that will show me the accounts that are currently associated with that data directory. So I see that I have this account here and then this account here that I just imported. Let's try to actually use these key pairs now. I'm gonna go back to my console and I'm gonna to try to send one ether on the mainnet from my first account to my second account and ignore the fact for a second that there's actually no ether in these. So if there was ether and I was just trying to send it normally, like in the test RPC, I would do web3.f.send transaction and then I would specify that I wanted to go from f.accounts0 and I want to go to f.accounts1 and let's make the value web 3.2 way one comma ether. Um, and then I hit enter and, and look at this error message that we get. It says error authentication needed password or unlock. Look at the personal variable. This is a list of all the geth functionality that's associated with managing accounts that's loaded into the global namespace. And there's a function called unlock account. So we can run personal.unlock account and then pass in f.accounts0. And we could pass a second argument in here, which is the password, but it's actually not a good idea to do this because then it will show up in your console history and your console logs, which is pretty bad uh, for security purposes. So we're gonna do this interactively, wait for the prompt and then type in the password. And if it did unlock the account, you will see this word true come through. So now if I did try to resend that transaction, we'll say that there's insufficient funds, which is the error that we were expecting to get. Just a note about unlocking your account, you do need to be somewhat conscious of security on the computer that you're unlocking your accounts from, because if you don't have a firewall and if you have certain ports exposed for RPC commands, it actually is possible for a remote attacker to access your private key while your account is unlocked. So, I mean, I, I've never really played around with this, so I'm not 100% sure how these attack vectors would work, but I do know people that have been running geth nodes on their local computer and unlocked their accounts and have had it remotely accessed. So it, it, you just need to be very conscious about um, exactly what your security configurations are when you're unlocking accounts on a local geth node.